An invincible football team was born that day, although they did fall short. Although they did fall short by order of the SEC Council against Alabama, they avenged that game in a national title win over Alabama. Ending Nick Saban's reign in college football, the Georgia Bulldogs were undisputed and rightful champions of football. And they defended this title in 2022 and won. We'll uh, work the coin toss uh, from the Georgia side of things and uh, we'll check in with Shock in just a moment. And that's where the timeline changed for Georgia. Todd Monk and Lick, Mike Bobo, comes on. Since then, they are no longer champions or invincible. So, will Mike Bobo continue the long-standing personal tradition of making other teams relevant? He made Alabama relevant. He made South Carolina relevant. He let Florida try to stay relevant when it was already smelling bad. Mike Bobo can make Clemson relevant again, too. Will he? Todd Munkin, where are you? The SEC is a knife fight. Most guys and the most knives win. Mike Bobo takes a claw hammer to a knife fight. He's never winning. Todd Munkin is Mike Tyson in his prime with a competitive instinct of Ty Cobb. Kirby Smart replaced that with a claw hammer in a knife fight. That's an interesting analogy. How exactly would that work out? Well, you can do a lot of damage with a claw hammer. A lot of damage before you bleed out in a knife fight. And Georgia fans are counting all that damage and saying all is well. But not all Georgia fans like what they see. Todd Munkin was Mike Tyson. Knocked him out quick. He was Ty Cobb. And, and he put a foot on their neck during the final count. Munkin was what Georgia never had. An explosive offense that scored. It was built to score. And on account of Todd Munkin, you see... He sees too many third downs, a gasket needs fixing. Bobo makes excuses about third down, and Munkin doesn't want them. Munkin was a fine-tuned Ferrari. Fast, sleek, efficient, balanced running and passing. And what do we have now? Do you see Mike Tyson? Hi, Cobb. So, what did the fans see was Munkin? Look at the scores. The games were over before halftime. Bobo doesn't even start to the third quarter. Look at the game. Do you believe Todd Munkin would need Brock Powers to save the day on the last second against Auburn? Basically the same against South Carolina and Tech. Bobo thinks it's still 2012. He thinks South Carolina, Auburn, and Tech are good. So he does what he does against good teams. Mike Bobo chokes. He's never failed to choke in a big moment. Bobo depends on the Heimlich maneuver to get to the next disaster. Well, you have to understand that almost is a big word for Mike Bobo. He leads in almost every category of almost. For example, he's almost won four SEC titles. 
he has won a bunch of Capital One games, and he's lost a few. And so, he's almost relevant. Relevant is the uh, definition of what George is trying to be. But the time that he was with Mark Rick, Georgia was mostly, almost, relevant. I suppose that Mike Bobo could be almost anything he wants. But he has chosen the path that he has chosen. That's no reason Georgia has to just go along with that path. So now we are coming full circle back to Clemson. Will we establish our dynasty again, or will we let Clemson back in? Will we let Texas control the next decade? Will Alabama keep breathing championship air? Bobo has a lot of pressure this season, but the fans are letting him off the hook because he's almost good, not invincible. Bunch, and the pass is thrown over the middle, and it's caught by Ngata into some kind of a rhythm. Ball's on the Georgia 37, second and 10. Uyunglele going to be dropped by Jalen Carter in the backfield. He dumps the ball off at the same moment, and they're going to say incomplete pass. Two for seven, Clemson's third down numbers. They'll throw it, and miscommunication. They were throwing it to Ngata. He was running a go route, and the ball lands behind him. As Georgia will head into the locker room, leading Clemson by a score of seven to nothing. Oh, 112 yards. Of need. The kick is away, and it is good. Dogs add three. It's a two-score game. Georgia leads it. 10 to nothing. We're getting very late in the third quarter. Less than two minutes to go. Uyunglele going to run it off to the left side. He pushes in there behind a five. Cook in the backfield with Daniels. We run McConkey in motion to the right again. Daniels sets up to throw. They blitz and sack. On for the first time tonight. That's their first sack of the game. Miles Murphy. The space. Nice pickup. Ball on the 18 for the Tigers. Second down. Uyunglele wants to throw. Stands in that pocket forever. Then dumps it off short. And we plow right through him. That's Kendrick, the Clemson transfer. Far side, slides in a little tight. We've got flags down on the snap of the football. And Dean and Walker just run and plow right through Uyangalale as the whistles were blowing and flags were thrown to stop the play, but they couldn't hear it down on that end of the field. To the near side, Uyangalale in the shotgun, stands in the pocket, throws, and it's caught by Ngata. For a big gainer, he caught it around the 38 on the Georgia sideline. Picked up the first down. Tigers moving. First and 10 at the Dogs 20. Play fake Uyongalele. Going to throw it deep for the far corner. Oh, my goodness. Keely Ringo just tackled the guy and threw him on his back and raises his left leg, gets the snap, stands in the pocket, throws a bullet in the back. It's back of the end zone. Broken up by Latavius Brini. Empty set for the Tigers. Uyongalele looks left, looks right. We chase him. He slings it up in the back corner, and it is incomplete over the back corner pylon. Ooh, there's an orange shoe in the, in the end zone. It looked like a yellow flag from here, but he lost the shoe. There's no flag on the play. Try a 22-yard field goal from the near hash, kicking left. And the kick is away, and the kick is good. And Clemson cooks in the backfield with Daniels. Play fake to Cook. James or JT backpedaling dumps it off to Eric's corner of this stadium here in Charlotte and they're going to enjoy this one for a little while before they start thinking about UAB next week a fine victory for the dogs Georgia 10 and Clemson 3 here in Charlotte in the big mayonnaise classic